Hello, or oh, as they say in Japan, Konnichiwa. Here we come with lesson number 23, and this lesson is another toughie, but we start off with a bit of review of things that we've learned so far. The techniques that I'm going to cover now is the technique just to point out 4x4 four four that can be found, and this enables you to get all kinds of numbers as a result. In this situation here, we have a 3, 6, 8, and 9. Those four numbers can fit into four cells, and we call it a 4x4. Four four. And the neat thing about a 4x4 four four is that if you recognize it, it's easy to work out other numbers. If I look at this here, we know that in this block, it's only a 6, 8, and 9. So therefore, this 9 turns this into a 6. Okay. Now that 6 means that this can be crossed out, so you're left with an 8-9 and an 8-9 matching pair. When you have a matching pair, any other numbers like an 8 or a 9 in this row will be eliminated. So the 9 can be eliminated, so you finish up with a 3. The 8 can be eliminated, so you finish up with a 5. So that's Again, a revision of what you can do with matching pairs and 4x4. Four four. Now over on this side, we have another situation where if you look very carefully, on this column here, we have a 7, 8, and 9. What that does is tell us that the 7, 8, and 9 have to be in these three cells here. Now based on having a 7, 8, and 9, uh, here's a 7, so that makes that an 8, 9. Here's an 8, so that makes that a 7, 9. And here's a 9, that makes that a 7, 8. And voila, we've got all the little numbers in, ready to continue with the puzzle. We'll be back in a second with another scenario. In this scenario, I've got a couple more things to revise. First of all, let's just take these top three blocks. And in this situation, uh, this... 1, 2, 4, it turned out to be that this was a 6, 7, 8. If that's a 6, 7, 8, you know how to work out these numbers. And let's do that by counting. This is, this is how you do it. It's a 1, 2, we need a 3. Uh, 4, we need a 5. 6, 7, 8, 9. 3, 5, 9. So you can put those in here. But look, I noticed a 9 down in here, so that's just a 3, 5. And this is the 359. Now, once you've got those in, we know from our experience in previous lessons that if you've got only two empty cells left, they have to be a matching pair. So this becomes a 1, 2. That's a little clue that's really handy to know. Also, what can you put down in here? Well, it's easy because we've got a 7, 8, and 9 in here, so we can work out what's in here. We're missing a 1, 2, we're missing a 3, so I can put a 3 there, a 3 there, and a 3 there. We're missing a 4, 5, we're missing a 5, put a 5 in there, and a 5 down there, and a 5 down there. Uh, what else are we missing? I think it's a 5, 6, we're missing a 6. And now if you check yourself, you can go through 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. You can do it that way. Now that's neat. You can now very easily work out what these three numbers are, but we'll leave that for the time being. But I just wanted to point out that, look, here's a 5, 6. If that 5, 6 exists, this becomes a 3. That crosses out that, that crosses out that, so you get a matching 5, 6. Okay, now that's one scenario. I'm going to suggest to you now that you just forget these top, top three blocks, and I'm just going to talk about these blocks in here. Ignore these. Matter of fact, it'd probably be easier if I just simply erase them uh, so you don't get confused. Here we go. Now, in this next one down the bottom, what we're looking for is a situation where a big number can result just because you knew how to put the little numbers in. Here we have a 4. In this block here, we cannot put a 4 along there. The only two places a 4 can go is there and there. Using the top, middle, bottom principle and technique, that means that this has to be a 4. Now it's easy to work out you've only got two cells left and you know how to do two cells. One more thing I'd like to point out on this particular one, and that's this. 
if you have this, a 9-7 and a 7-9, you have the blade of a cleaver. And when you have that situation, you know that up here is the handle of the cleaver and the 7-9 have to fit in there. Well, that's easy to do because here's a 9, so that becomes a 7 and that becomes a 9. So there's another couple of scenarios. We'll come up with another one. Here's another one. Very simple. We have here a 4 and a 4, bearing in mind that this is a block where only two 4s could go. Same over here. And when you've got that, you've got what we, we call a, um, I'll do it in red, we've got a mallet developing. Here's your mallet. And the handle of the mallet has to be in here. If that's the case, where does the four go? Very simple. Because of top, or because of a left, a center, and right, this has to be a big four. And that's it for that scenario. Well, here's another scenario. It doesn't happen very often, but just in case you notice it, this is what you can do. I have here what I call a red cross. Now, Oh, this, this particular pattern is right there on our board now. It could be in other places, but this is um, easy to see. And by doing that, we can tell what has to go in the middle of all these, these, number, all these cells in here. Because this 6-4 cannot be in here, it has to be on the side. So one of these is going to be a 6 and a 4. I'll just put a 4 and a 6 in here. Could be the other way around. Uh, and now let's look at the 3-8. The 3-8 cannot be in here. It has to be there and there. So that's the 3-8. Now that's very simple. We simply now do the counting system. One, two. We're missing a two in this block. So bang, voila, in no time we've filled up a whole block. That's it for that scenario. One more and then I'm going to show you a really tough uh, technique, it's called the, the swordfish. Well, here's the final scenario. It's very easy. If you look at it carefully, we have a sideways table. Here are the legs and here's the top of the table. And we've just revising from the past, just to re let you get, get caught up and re review things. Here's an 8-5, there's a 5-8. Therefore, we must have a 5-8 in here, like so. And if there happened to be a 5 over here, well, that becomes an 8, and that becomes your 5. That was an easy scenario, wasn't it? Now, we're going to show you the swordfish, which is a very difficult puzzle. I find it takes a long time to, to locate them, but if you can locate them, it can be very helpful to get you a number or two that will lead you to the end of your puzzle. Now we come to this incredible, tough one. It's called the swordfish, and you only use it when you're really stuck on a very difficult puzzle. So in this situation, let me start off with it very simply. What do we actually look for? Well, in this case, we're looking for three rows, and you can do this with columns as well. Three rows in which there's only two numbers that can fit in two cells of those rows. Here we have there and there, here we have it there and there, and there we have it there and there. And the interesting thing about this is that it is based on three columns as well. They call it, before I show you that, they call it the um, swordfish because here's a nose of a swordfish, I suppose. This is my theory, I'm not sure why they call it a swordfish, but there's three swords that stick out. These are the three ones here. Those three. And in each case, the row only has two possible nines. In each case. But the interesting thing about this is that they, they connect up. They connect up with three columns. And here are the three columns. Watch. There's two nines in that one. Sometimes it could be three or four nines. There's uh, in this one, it could be nines in that one, and it could be this one too. 
So you have a very interesting scenario here where you've got three swords, each with two numbers, and you, they make up three columns. And the idea is that once you've got one of these is that you can get rid of any nines that are in the columns that are not part of the swordfish. I'll repeat. You can get rid of any nines that are in these columns that are not part of the swordfish. And what's the part of the swordfish? That one, that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. And here's another interesting thing. You're looking here at a closed circuit. A circuit where you start off like a racetrack at the beginning and you come back right to where you started. Watch this. If I start there and go across there and down here and across there and down here and across here and up there, I have completed a circuit. And if that happens, that means you've got, you definitely know you've got three columns. And it's just similar to the uh, X-Wing in this respect. If this is a nine, then that won't be a nine. That, that, sorry, this is a nine, that won't be a nine, but this will be. If that's a nine, that won't be a nine, but this will be. If that's a nine, that won't be a nine, but this will be. So it's like the X-Wing in a way. So what I'm going to do now is to put on all the numbers that were originally there and that were solved and then see what we can do with this, okay? Here's the puzzle with a swordfish in it and it's a difficult puzzle and you know sometimes you may go through all the steps and all the procedures and look at all the techniques and you get stuck and that's okay, it happens to us all. You can see if there's a swordfish and here's again our swordfish there to there, here to there, and here to there. And so you could have a swordfish made up of rows, you can also have a swordfish made up of columns. Now as I said, we can now look at the columns and get rid of the nines that are not part of the swordfish. Again, let me revise, the swordfish is this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. The, the nines on the end of the line. And there's only in those rows two p possible places for a nine. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see what happens. We're going to eliminate those nines. We'll look at the first column. It just turns out that there's not an extra nine. There's only two and they're both part of the swordfish. So we leave it. In this column here, we have two nines there and there that are part of the swordfish, but this nine is not part of the swordfish, so we can eliminate it. Now, let's go to the third column. Let me point out these columns here for you. There's a column there, there's a column there, and this is the column here, the blue line. If we look at this third column, we'll see that there's a nine here, part of the swordfish, a nine down here is part of the swordfish, but we have other nines that are in that column that we can eliminate. We can eliminate, for example, that nine, and we can also eliminate that nine. Now, what is the ramifications of that? Let's have a look. Um, let me see now. Okay, here's a row. If you look at this row, you will notice that there's only one place for a nine to go. So in that case, we can take away all these little numbers and put in a 9. Now that has very interesting ramifications because that gets rid of this 9. By doing that, we now have a 6-7, a 6-7 matching pair. Well, isn't that interesting? Now, let's see if we can go a bit further. If, that's a, if there's a 7 here, there's no place for a 7 along this bottom line. See, have a look at this. There's not a place for a 7, so the 7 will have to go there. So we can put a 7 there, and that I'm sure is going to have some ramifications. If I put that 7 there, then there's a 7 here, and there's a 7 there, bottom, middle, top. This, this has to become a 7. Uh, because we can't have a 7 here, because of that 7, this becomes a 6. And because of this 7, this becomes a 7. Wow, things are starting to happen now. We'll make that a 7. 
Let's go back to this six. I've just noticed this. This six means that this six here is cancelled. And therefore, you're left with only one number, and that is an eight. Put the eight in. Now, the ramification of that is that this eight means that this becomes a four. Four eight becomes a four. And the ramification of that, oh boy, this four means that this becomes an eight. And so you're on the way to solve the puzzle, step by step, just because we got that nine. Well, that was it for this lesson. Have fun looking for and spotting a swordfish. Sayonara.